Antimicrobial Susceptibility Testing Antimicrobial susceptibility or sensitivity testing is a laboratory test which guides us to select the antimicrobial agents in treating infections. Antimicrobial agents tested in a basic microbiology laboratory are usually those that are effective against bacteria and fungi. In this section, we shall be limiting ourselves with the susceptibility testing of only antibacterial agents. Antimicrobial susceptibility testing guides the clinicians in choosing the right antibiotic for a particular infection. It also helps in identifying the susceptibility patterns of common isolates in a particular hospital or a community. This data can help in choosing the right empirical treatment for critically ill patients even before their culture results are obtained from the microbiology laboratory. This test is performed in a microbiology laboratory under standard conditions so that the results are reproducible. The prerequisite for any antimicrobial susceptibility test is the presence of isolated pure colonies of bacteria of interest from clinical specimens. The different methods used to perform antimicrobial susceptibility testing are disk diffusion method which can be classified as kirby barr disk diffusion method and Stokes disk diffusion method. Dilution methods which can be classified as Ager dilution method and broth microdilution method. Gradient diffusion method or the e-test and automated antimicrobial susceptibility testing systems. In this section, we shall limit ourselves to the description of the Kirby Bauer disk diffusion method as it is a simple, practical, reliable and a widely used susceptibility testing method. Before we commence, let us learn a few definitions which are widely employed while reading the antimicrobial susceptibility tests. Minimum inhibitory concentration or MIC is the lowest concentration of an antimicrobial agent that visibly inhibits the growth of the organism. Minimum bactericidal concentration or MBC is the lowest concentration of the antimicrobial agent that results in the death of the organism. Modified kirby barr disk diffusion method. In this method, antibiotic impregnated filter paper disks are placed on a Muller Hinton plate with lawn culture of an organism. The antibiotic diffuses from the disk into the agar in decreasing amounts as you move further away from the disk. If the organism is killed or inhibited by the concentration of the antibiotic, there will be no growth in the immediate area around the disc. This zone is called the zone of inhibition. Always use discs of correct antimicrobial content, an inoculum which gives confluent growth and a reliable muller hinton agar. Quality control for media should always be performed. The test method must be followed exactly in every detail. After incubation at 35 degrees centigrade for 16 to 18 hours, zone sizes are measured and interpreted using CLSI standards which are available as charts from various manufacturers. Antimicrobial discs. The choice of antimicrobials to be included in susceptibility tests will depend on the pathogen, the specimen, range of locally available antimicrobials and prescribing policies of your hospital. These discs can be purchased commercially or can be prepared in-house. Inoculum of turbidity standard equivalent to McFarland 0.5. McFarland is a barium sulphate standard against which the turbidity of the test and control inocula can be compared. When matched with the McFarland 0.5 standard, the inocula should give confluent growth. Always shake the standard immediately before use. Muller Hinton Agar. Prepare and sterilize the medium as instructed by the manufacturer. The pH of the medium should be 7.2 to 7.4.
In addition to factors such as pH and cation content, the depth of the agar medium can affect test accuracy and must be carefully controlled. If the agar is too thick, the inhibition zones are smaller. If it is thin, the zones are larger. Pour about 25 milliliters of media into a 90 millimeter diameter sterile petri dish to give a depth of 4 millimeters. Care must be taken to pour the plates on a level surface so that the depth of the medium is uniform. Each new batch of agar should be controlled by testing it with a control strain of Enterococcus faecalis ATCC 29212 and a cotrimoxazole disc. The zone of inhibition should be 20 millimeters or more in diameter. The plates can be stored at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade for up to two weeks. Before using, dry the plates with their lids slightly raised in a 35 to 37 degree centigrade incubator for about 30 minutes. Control strains. Control strains are used to test the performance of the method. These can be obtained from reference laboratories or can be purchased commercially. The following strains of bacterial species are recommended. Escherichia coli, ATCC 25922. Klepsila pneumoniae, ATCC 700603. Pseudomonas aeruginosa, ATCC 27853. Enterococcus faecalis, ATCC 29212. Staphylococcus aureus, ATCC 25923. The control strains should be grown on slopes of nutrient agar or tripton soya agar and stored refrigerated at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. They should be subcultured every 3 to 6 months. At the beginning of each week, a nutrient broth or agar culture should be prepared for daily use. Method The prerequisite for any antimicrobial sensitivity test is the presence of isolated colonies of bacteria which are obtained from various specimens sent to the laboratory. Day 1. Culture specimens on appropriate media using techniques described in the earlier section on culture methods. Incubate overnight to get isolated colonies of bacteria whose sensitivity to various antimicrobials can now be tested. Day 2. Remove the antimicrobial discs and the Muller Hinton plates from the refrigerator and keep them outside for 20 to 30 minutes till they reach the room temperature. Wear personal protective equipment. Label the test tube of nutrient broth in which the colonies are to be inoculated. Using a sterile wire loop, touch three to five well-isolated colonies of similar appearance to the test organism and emulsify in three to four milliliters of sterile physiological saline or nutrient broth. Culture grown from a specimen can give a mixture of colonies which are representative of different bacteria present in the specimen. Care should be taken to pick only one type of colony. Match the turbidity of the suspension to the 0.5 Macfarlane turbidity standard in good light. Mix the standard immediately before use. When comparing turbidities, it is easier to view against a printed sheet of paper. Label the base of the Muller Hinton plate with sample details. Using a sterile swab, inoculate a labeled plate of Muller Hinton agar by the lawn culture method as described in the earlier section on culture methods. With a petri dish lid in place, allow 3 to 5 minutes but no longer than 15 minutes for the surface of the agar to dry. Using sterile forceps or a needle mounted in a holder or a multi-disc dispenser, place the appropriate antimicrobial discs evenly distributed on the inoculated plate. Note, the discs should be about 15 millimeters from the edge of the plate and no closer than about 25 millimeters from disc to disc. No more than six discs should be applied 
on a 90 mm Petri dish. For an inexperienced worker, the back of the plate can be marked with a pen indicating the position where the discs need to be placed. Each disc should be lightly pressed down to ensure its contact with the agar. It should not be moved once in place. Inoculate control plates of Muller Hinton agar with control strains E. coli 80 cc 25922 for gram negative bacteria and Staph aureus 80 cc 25923 for gram positive bacteria. The Muller Hinton agar plates should be from the same batch as the test plates and the antimicrobial discs should be similar to the ones applied on the test plates. Within 30 minutes of applying the discs, invert the control and test plates and incubate it aerobically at 35 degrees centigrade for 16 to 18 hours. Day 3. After overnight incubation, Examine the control and test plates to ensure the growth is uniform. Using a ruler on the underside of the plate, measure the diameter of each zone of inhibition in millimeters. The end point of inhibition is where the growth starts. The interpretive categories have been standardized and defined in CLSI guidelines, performance standards for AST. These charts are available according to the isolates and help in guiding antimicrobial selection. Susceptible or S. Interpretive category that indicates an organism is inhibited by the recommended dose of an antimicrobial agent at the infection site. Intermediate or I. Interpretive category that represents an organism that might require a higher dose of antibiotic for a longer period of time to be inhibited. Resistant or R. Interpretive category that indicates an organism is not inhibited by the recommended dose of an antimicrobial agent at the infection site. Interpretation of zone sizes. Interpret the zone sizes of each antimicrobial using the CLSI interpretative chart and report the organism as resistant intermediate or moderately susceptible or susceptible or sensitive resistant resistant indicates that the antimicrobial agent in question may not be an appropriate choice for treatment intermediate indicates a number of possibilities the potential utility of the antimicrobial agent in body sites where it may be concentrated for example the urinary tract or if high concentrations of the drugs are used. Possible effectiveness of the antimicrobial agent against the isolate, but possibly less so than against a susceptible isolate. Measuring from the edge where the growth starts, identify the bacteria as susceptible, intermediately susceptible, or resistant. There are three exceptions to the rule. With sulfonamides and cotrimoxazole, ignore slight growth within the zone of inhibition. Certain proteus species may swarm into the area of inhibition. When beta-lactamase producing staphylococci are tested, zone of inhibition are produced with a heaped up, clearly defined edge. Regardless of the size of the inhibition zone, they should be reported as resistant. Critical points in quality assurance. Culture medium. Muller Hinton agar should be prepared as per the manufacturer's instructions and the pH of the medium should be 7.2 to 7.4. About 25 milliliters of media should be poured into a 90 millimeter diameter sterile Petri dish to give a depth of 4 millimeters. Care must be taken to pour the plates on a level surface so that the depth of the medium is uniform. If the medium is too thin, the inhibition zones will be falsely large, and if too thick, the zones will be falsely small. Plates should be stored in a refrigerator at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. If refrigerated, they should be wrapped in plastic to minimize evaporation. Just before use, if excess moisture 
is visible on the surface. Plates should be placed in an incubator at 35 degrees centigrade with lids ajar in a laminar flow hood at room temperature until the moisture evaporates, which usually takes 10 to 30 minutes. Antimicrobial discs. The supply stock of the discs should be stored at minus 20 degrees centigrade, whereas the discs in use should be stored in a refrigerator. Before applying the discs to the plate, the discs should be removed from the refrigerator and kept outside for 20 to 30 minutes till they reach the room temperature. Expired antimicrobial discs should not be used. Proper placement of the discs is important. The discs should be placed about 15 millimeters from the edge of the plate and no closer than about 25 millimeters from disc to disc. No more than six discs should be applied on a 90 millimeters Petri dish. Haphazard placement of the discs will result in overlapping of zones and non-reliable results. Size of the inoculums. A heavy inoculum will result in small zone sizes, whereas a lighter inoculum will give larger zone sizes. Hence, the turbidity of the inoculum should always be checked against a standard. The recommended standard is 0.5 Macfarlane standard. Incubation condition. The ideal incubation temperature is 35 to 37 degrees centigrade. Larger zones may be seen with incubation temperature less than 35 degrees centigrade. The duration of incubation should be around 16 to 18 hours or overnight. Lesser duration of incubation will not give reliable results. Control with reference strains. Controls with reference ATCC strains should always be put daily with each batch of antimicrobial sensitivity plates. Reading inhibition diameters. The measuring device like a ruler, a caliper or a standardized chart is held on the back of the inverted Petri dish which is illuminated with reflected light located a few inches above a black non-reflecting background. Zone margin should be considered the area showing no obvious visible growth detectable with the unaided eye.